Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Fish Market Academy, where we teach you how to fish for gains. So in today's video, we'll be exploring the Matis protocol, as well as the various farms that are available in this ecosystem. And if you found this video useful, please remember to like and subscribe, and let's get started. So just a disclaimer again, nothing I say is financial advice. So what is Matis? Matis is essentially a layer 2 on the Ethereum blockchain and it's an uh, optimism fork. So a lot of the stuff is basically following optimism, whereby you have fast transactions and low gas fees while security is being maintained by the Ethereum network. So they instead of calling it uh, optimism virtual machine, they have their own version called the Matis virtual machine. And basically the difference is that for Arbitrum and Optimism, the sequencers and validators are all like single party, whereas for Matis, it uses like a random sequencer selection. So it's more decentralized, more democratic. Uh, although Arbitrum and Optimism will slowly become more decentralized, but Matis from the start is already more decentralized in terms of their sequencing, which is basically the process of sending the data back onto the main chain, which is Ethereum. Then they have validators also that allows for faster validation and faster withdrawal to the EVE mainnet. Because when you are actually withdrawing from Arbitrum and Optimism, uh, they, they actually do require days if you're using the bridge. But uh, if, of course, there are now a lot of solutions like Hop Protocol that allows you to swap your EVE directly onto any layer 2 without going through this long validation withdrawal process. Hop Protocol unfortunately doesn't have Matis yet, so we'll explore bridges in the later slide. Uh, but just know that for Matis, if you want to withdraw, it only takes a couple of hours, which is a lot more user-friendly. Matis also has built-in IPFS storage and low-code functionality, which is very helpful for developers as well. And it allows developers to have easier time creating their apps and launching it on the Matis ecosystem, thanks to all the additional features that Matis has. So just to elaborate a little bit more, uh, Matis has a lot of one-click deployment with uh, pre-developed templates and framework and APIs and modules. I've not actually tried all of this because I'm not a developer and these are based on their documents. So hopefully this uh, does allow developers to be more attracted towards the Matis ecosystem thanks to all these new features. And they also have DACs, which stands for Decentralized Autonomous Companies. It's a bit like a DAO, but it's a bit more corporate or more structured and it does allow for better management of organizations thanks to their DAC features. The next slide will have a bit more elaboration on this. And unlike Ethereum where they have all of their computation and storage stuff on the same layer, for Matis, they actually separate the computation and the storage layer so that it's more modular. And this does allow the whole ecosystem or, or the whole layer to be a bit more scalable. And of course, it's 100% EVM compatible. So all existing EVM apps can just be ported over easily. And they have a fast transaction of about 2000 TPS with low gas fees. So I've been trying around in the Matis ecosystem. The gas fee is about a dollar, so it's pretty cheap compared to other layer 2s. Or it's quite comparable when you compare it to other layer 2s. But if you're comparing with like AVEX or the Phantom ecosystem, it's kind of pricey. Because uh, AVEX, Phantom, all this, when the congestion is low, it's uh, really, really very cheap. It's like a few cents only. So what I find really interesting about DAC and also what Matis has envisioned for their entire ecosystem is to actually be more business facing. So a lot of their inbuilt features are catered towards organizational tools like payroll management, communication, collaboration, along with like your standard governance and voting. So this means that it's actually realistic or more friendly for existing businesses to move their entire operations on chain or move some of their operations on chain with all these utility features that Matis has. And this will create more intrinsic demand from the real world adoption compared to other ecosystems where they don't have all of these things inbuilt. So I find that concept or at least that vision pretty interesting and this does help towards mass adoption from a business standpoint. So they have a platform called Polis, which essentially is like the dashboard of the Matis ecosystem. When you go in, you can log into the various dApps that is built on the platform. And you can also use it to do the standard stuff like transferring tokens. And you can display all your transaction history across all the different dApps that you're interacted with on Matis. And you can also see all the transaction records that's happening across Matis. And you are able to just sign in with your MetaMask and that will maintain your same Ethereum address. But if you don't have MetaMask, you can actually create an account. But because many businesses may not have a MetaMask account, they actually allow you to create your standard email password type of thing, uh, which might be more business friendly. So I think they are creating a lot of utility and tools for business owners in mind, which I find that probably more useful in terms of getting real mass adoption in the real world. 
So this is how the website looks like. Instead of connecting with MetaMask, you can connect with your email and password, which will probably be more user-friendly or more familiar to traditional businesses. So this does help to onboard real businesses and improve mass adoption if they create a, a like an interface that they are really familiar with instead of forcing everybody to use MetaMask. Then of course, once they're in and a lot of the features are Web3 Web3 related, then they probably will use MetaMask. But one step at a time. So I think what Mattis is envisioning and creating for all these business owners probably seems very interesting and I'm interested to see what they continue to build for business owners. So in terms of how to bridge into the Mattis ecosystem, uh, there are a couple of different bridges already. You have the Poly Network, which can move BSC to Mattis. You have Seller, you have Boring DAO, you have Relay Chain, and you have, of course, the Mattis bridge. So you can pause this video to take a look at the breakdown and which bridge you want to use. Personally, I used the Mattis bridge and the experience was pretty smooth, but I don't know if it's actually the most worthwhile one. So you might want to look at the cost to see which one is the most worthwhile one because moving from Ethereum to Metis can be pretty expensive if gas fee is high. So they've also recently launched a $100 million Genesis fund led by Natalia Emeline, which is actually Vitalik's mom. So you know this is probably pretty bullish for the ecosystem. And this is meant to help Metis gain traction against the other L1s. So their TVL has continued to grow and they are now the second largest TVL in terms of a layer 2 solution after Arbitrum. So they have already more TVL than Optimism and all the other layer 2. So that's a good sign. And the grant will be allocated across different protocols including DeFi, GameFi, and DAOs. So that will probably be attractive for developers who are looking to build these applications on Metis. So right now, these are the available uh, popular protocols on Metis. Agora is the money market. Then you have NetSwap, which is your standard official AMM swap. And then you have Tetis, which is like the second official AMM swap. But there are more features because they have an inbuilt leverage yield farm as well as other stuff that they have. So uh, think of NetSwap as like your Uniswap, very safe, very standard. And then Tetis is like your sushi swap where they try to uh, create more stuff. And from price action wise, NetSwap really isn't doing very well. But Tetis is actually doing pretty decently in terms of pricing. So in Metis ecosystem, innovation does have a premium in terms of valuation. So that's good to see. And then you have Drachma, which is like your curve. They have AMM and stable swap, uh, but they don't have DAI. Uh, so hopefully they actually uh, add that in because they only have USDC and USDT. And DAI is something that is used as some of the pairing inside Tetis ecosystem as well as NetSwap. So it would be nice to have that. And then they have Starstream, which is your auto compounding vault. This is like your beefy, so pretty standard stuff. But they do have a different tokenomic, so it's actually pretty high emission. And you can take a look at the tokenomics in their docs before you go and buy this token itself. And because if you think it's like beefy with very limited supply, then it's actually not the case. And then there is Maya, which is like an own fork, but they do have some stuff that's going to be coming on that will differentiate it away from own fork. And then you have Hermes, which is like an AMM solidly fork. It's not out yet for Hermes, but it should be out soon, like tomorrow. But the emissions for Hermes starts tomorrow. So you might want to take a look if you are interested in getting uh, emissions for this solidly fork protocol in case uh, this catches on in Metis. So here are some of the APR. Uh, these numbers might differ by the time you look, watch this video, but you have pretty standard stuff like your EVE USDC and all that. Uh, but what I think I would personally be trying is the Metis USDC. So those are actually generating pretty high APRs and also the EVE Metis as well as BTC as well as EVE Metis. I, I think all these are pretty safe. I would personally avoid any of the net swap LP because net swap price action just doesn't seem to be able to recover. Uh, of course, that might change in the future, but I would just avoid that personally. So on Tetis, you have a more interesting farms like Avex and Phantom, which you can bridge from Relay Chain. And these also have pretty attractive APRs, like 100%. And because they have leverage yield farm available, you could actually go like 10x leverage on Avex Metis to get up to like a 1000% APR, which is pretty good. Uh, but of course, don't do that because you probably might get liquidated if the market moves violently in either direction. And what's cool about Tetis is that they have some kind of auto compounding reward. So if you don't want to basically harvest, you can actually generate more Tetis over time. So you don't have to keep harvesting your Tetis. So that makes it more convenient for people who are a bit more passive farming. And of course, speaking of passive farming, you can't really beat auto compounding vaults. So Starstream, you can actually deposit stuff like your Phantom Metis, etc. 
for about 145% APR. There, there isn't too many on Starstream, but there is still some that you can take a look at. So these are some examples. And last but not least, PTSD alert. For those who are having PTSD from OMFOG, you might want to look away. But Maya is essentially an OMFOG and they give you up to 36,000% APY, which we all know is a lie. So for those who didn't get burned badly enough on Wonderland, feel free to participate in Maya as well. Alright, let's move on to the token utility. So as usual, Metis is the governance token for the Metis ecosystem. But what's special about Metis is that for the gas fee, it actually uses Metis as the gas fee. And this is unlike other layer 2 ecosystems where if we take for example Optimism, Arbitrum, Boba, they all use ETH as gas. And Metis is the only layer 2 right now that uses the Metis governance token as gas, which can be very bullish for Metis compared to the other layer 2, which they either don't have a token or they, they're using ETH as a token. Like, like Nier also uses ETH as a token for gas instead of the Nier token for the gas, which makes Metis stand out in my opinion. So this is the tokenomics and you can pause this video to take a look. So in terms of tokenomics, there will be a total supply of 10 million metis which will be emitted over a period of 10 years. So that's quite long but just remember that the first year there is a couple of team unlocks and the first big one has just passed. So it was 13 February and it was a pretty, uh, I wouldn't say it's a bearish unlock. The price didn't really go down that much and it rebounded very quickly after the unlock. So if investors are not really selling or if it's a bullish unlock, then fundamentally the the price action should be a lot stronger compared to tokens that just get dumped by investors after unlock. So that makes the outlook for Metis not as bad. So I consider everything from founding team to strategic investors as part of the internal insider and that's about 28% which I think is not too bad for a layer 2 or like a mainnet type of token and over 70% of it is kind of public in a sense so that's pretty okay in terms of tokenomics. So the emission schedule, you can just pause this video to take a look. But the key thing is that there's a lot of unlock in the first two years. So you might want to have a longer term outlook for this token. But the overall emission of the liquidity mining is over 10 years. So you probably, which is a pretty long time. So I wouldn't worry about inflation too much as long as the founding teams are not dumping the tokens too much. So the remaining 47% of it will be over 10 years, but out of this 47%, 31% of it, right, which is about 14% of the overall protocol, is going to be released in the transaction mining in the first year. So like I mentioned, there's going to be a lot of unlocks and inflation in the first year, but after that, it should get a lot better because the remaining 69% will be over the course of the next 9 years, so 10 years in total. So assuming this first year, the price action don't go down too much, then I think the investors are pretty bullish. The rest of the years, it probably will do very well as long as it doesn't hurt investor sentiment in the first year or two. So in terms of upcoming developments, there is Hermes, which is like the AMM decks of Maya. They are the same creators. And this is very similar to Hermes being like Solidly and Maya being like Solid decks. So Hermes will incentivize the pool with the most fees instead of liquidity. And they will follow the same VE33 model, just like Solidly. And this is different from your regular AMM models where it's just like your standard Uniswap, SushiSwap stuff. So Hermes emission will begin on 10th of March. And the fee generated from the protocol will be given in the form of Hermes tokens to VE Hermes holders. So you might want to start farming Hermes em emissions once it's out and then lock it and then you can get more Hermes tokens if you are bullish on the protocol. The treasury will get 1-5% depending on what week they join to partner the ecosystem when they arrive to Metis and they will get between 200 to 1 million VE Hermes which is basically 1-5%. So Maya DAO is special because they will own 25% of the Hermes protocol forever, but multiple airdrops will come in the form of lock VE Hermes NFTs. This is similar to the solidly NFTs that are being given out. And you can pause this video to read about the snapshot details. So the Hermes voting mining event will be split between three different parties, the liquidity providers, the Maya treasury, as well as the ecosystem partners. So the a split is accordingly based on this. So 65% will be to ecosystem partners. And for the public, we'll be farming in these pools. So SAMM is the stable AMM. If you have used Solidly before, you should be familiar with the stable pools and the variable pools. 
So in conclusion, Matrix provides a scalable and cost-efficient environment for building and interacting with Web3 applications, especially in terms of getting real businesses on board Matrix to actually use on-chain stuff for their actual business operations. Not sure how much traction that is getting, but it's nice to see that at least there's this ecosystem that is pushing that as one of its main focus. On top of that, Matrix being the only layer 2 that uses its own native token Matrix as gas is pretty bullish on the price because we have seen how gas token usually does pretty well in terms of price action. And of course, with the help of Vitalik Buterin's mother pushing this ecosystem in terms of promoting it, as well as having a strong management team, the future does seem pretty good for Matis. And the market cap of Matis currently is about 500 million, so that's pretty low in terms of native gas token. And in terms of risk reward or upside potential, it does seem pretty solid at this point if the ecosystem does catch on. But ultimately, at the end of the day, remember to do your own research and invest with caution. Oh, my camera just disappeared. I just realized my webcam overheated. But if you guys want to find out what I'm doing on Matis, you can join the community where I share with you guys what I do. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you found it useful, do remember to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys again soon. Bye! Baby, fish the